with everything that's going on with the world with COVID-19, I think we all need to create for ourselves a little happiness in our home. Hello and welcome again to Fiber Warriors. My name is Susanna and I am your fiber strategist. I wanted to welcome you to my new studio. This is a little setup that I put together in my home. I had some free time with everything that's going on in the world today and being quarantined. I got a little stir crazy and wanted to create myself a happy place. So welcome to my happy place. It's hard to believe that Stitches West was a little bit over a month here in California and so much has changed within this last month. And now that I find myself spending more time at home than I'm used to, I've been going through a lot of my stash and have been able to knit up quite a bit from it. But I've been dying to get into my purchases from Stitches West. So because of that, I decided to share with you today what I've purchased at at Stitches West 2020. I was planning on attending Stitches West all four days this year, but um, I didn't get a chance to. I felt a little under the weather after Friday. So this was the first year that Stitches opened their doors on Thursday to the public. So I snuck out of work a little bit earlier, not too early, it was around 4 p.m. And I met two friends that had attended classes on Thursday. I met them in the marketplace. And um, luckily I had already gone through um, the list of the vendors and I had identified a couple of things that I wanted to get before they sold out. So the first top that I went to was Monarch Knitting. Monarch Knitting is located in Pacific Grove, which is close to where I live, but I never find time to drive down there and visit them. What I purchased from them was the Wolf Folk Luft which is a bulky weight yarn. It consists of 55% merino wool and 45% pima cotton. So if you look here, you can see that this is a chainette texture, which basically means that the chains are woven together to create the bulkiness of the bulk weight yarn, but without the heaviness of the yarn. This is going to create a piece of fabric that is going to be very light and fluffy. What I ended up getting was four skeins of this 4L colorway, which is a yellow-brown colorway. So this yarn's gonna end up being the Gretty Cowl by Wolf Hulk Design Team, and it is an updated dickey. And a dickey is usually a piece of cloth that is underneath a jacket or outerwear, and it ends up mimicking what a sweater would look like underneath that outerwear. As you can see here in this picture, what it's going to look like is a turtleneck sweater under the jacket. So the other thing that I bought that was a must was from the Crafty Flutter By Creations and they're located in Aurora, Ohio. What I purchased was the end binders for knitting and crocheting. I do mostly knitting, but they can be used for both knitting and crocheting. And I absolutely hate seeing and feeling loose ends on my projects when I'm knitting them and before I weave in the ends. And so using this hides those loose ends that I absolutely hate. I actually have to admit that I opened these up and used them already because, like I said, I absolutely hate having the ends visible when I'm knitting. One set is a set of six. The other one is in my knitting corner. I also went on Friday. The first thing that caught my eye was from Universal Yarns and they're located in Harrisburg, North Carolina. So very rarely do I get a chance to be able to buy yarn from them unless it's at Stitches West. The yarn that caught my eye was the Fibra Natura Whisper Lace in Garnet, which is a very light fingering weight yarn. This yarn consists of 70% superwash wool and 30% silk blend. And it is 440 yards per skein. And I purchased four of those skeins. This yarn was hidden in a corner of the Universal booth and I feel so blessed for having found it. 
As you can see here, the colorway is this garnet pinkish maroon. As you can see here, the color is just absolutely beautiful. I knew I was going to make a sweater with this yarn, and it wasn't until I stopped off at the Webbs booth that I found the perfect matching mohair to go along with it. And that's when I decided to go ahead and use this yarn for the Love Note sweater. So the yarn that's going to complement this yarn is Valley Yarns Southampton yarn, which is a mohair blend of 72% kid mohair and 28% mulberry silk. And it's in the colorway 006. So you can see here, it's this pinkish color of mohair. That's gonna look absolutely gorgeous together with the Fibra Natura Whisper Lace in Garnet. And I can't wait to knit this up. The next place I stopped by was at Hugh Loco. I've been dying to buy some yarn from Hugh Loco for a very long time. I often go to their website and drool over the beautiful colors that they have on their yarn. And this time I saw them at Stitches West. They're originally located in Loveland, Colorado, and this was the first time that I was able to see them in person at a show. So what I purchased was the woolen worsted yarn, and each skein is 220 yards and I was able to get one skein of the colorway Smoky Mountain. They said it was a new colorway and they only had one skein on the table so I snagged it. It's absolutely gorgeous colorway. It's got tones of blues and grays and it's going to look great as a hat. It actually looks a little bit more blue to purplish blue here on camera than it does in real life. So it looks a lot more, leans more towards the gray than it does here on camera. The pattern I plan to make with this is the Winter Walk by Tracy Miller. She is one of the Grocery Girls from the Grocery Girls podcast, and I've been recently watching a lot more of their podcasts since I've been working from home and also at home quarantining. So the hat is a beautiful hat with cables that flow from a one by one ribbing cuff and it is a very dramatic cable pattern across the front and stocking it across the back. I can't wait to knit this up. I've been really into hats recently and I've knitted a couple of them since I've been home. So I'm dying to cast this one on so that I can hopefully knit this week or next week. The next booth that I stopped at was Jill's Design. Their design studio is located in Ellicott City in Maryland. And what she brought was absolutely beautiful leather embellishments for shawl cuffs and for shawl pins and also her leather pedestal buttons that I just couldn't resist. She's very ingenious in what she did with those buttons. They don't require any commitment when it comes to where you place the button. You can basically place them anywhere within your knitting project. And in the back, it's a little screw that you just tighten onto the back side of the button. And so for a person like me, I absolutely hate buttonholes. It gives me that flexibility of having a cardigan with buttons that I can then place myself after the project has been knitted. So what I ended up getting, I'm not going to show you everything that I got from her because I'm a little embarrassed about it. I actually spent quite a bit of money with her. But what I ended up getting was one of her shawl cuffs. So I'll show this to you a little bit closer. It is a ring that wrap around this leather cuff and this can go around any size shawl. So I got this cuff and I also got three of the large diameter buttons. So you can see here, this in the back is that little screw top that I was talking about. So I got the large buttons, three of those, and then I also got three of the small buttons. So they're both functional and decorative. And because I loved her stuff so much, I went to her website to see what else she had. And I ended up purchasing these 
these come in sets of two so I got two sets they can be placed anywhere on your project either for a shawl or a cardigan and this can take place of buttons so that I don't have to sew on those pesky little buttons and I also got this wonderful clasp here and it opens up so that I can attach it to any project also so very versatile so this year I am trying to push myself out of my knitting comfort zone and I've been teaching myself new patterns, new stitches, new methods of knitting. And one of the things that's on my knitting bucket list is to knit mittens. And because of that, I wanted to pick up some mitten blockers from Stitches West. I only found one vendor that was carrying mitten blockers, and that was the Fiber Lady. They're located in Louisville, Texas. And I picked up the heart mitten blockers that are in the medium size. Have I knit mittens yet? Absolutely not. I haven't gotten around to that yet, but my plan is that this year I will knit at least a pair of mittens and I'm hoping that this will be something that I will be knitting many of. The next booth that I saw was from the Sierra Rose Alpaca booth located in Grass Valley, California. They had some wonderful accessories, patterns, and also alpaca based yarn. But what I fell in love with was this little guy. So how can you not fall in love with this little guy? So this is an alpaca fur stuffed animal. The alpaca was made with real alpaca fur, so all of this fluff is real alpaca fur. It's handcrafted in Peru, and it's very soft. Each one are one of a kind. I have not yet decided on a name for this little guy, but I'd like to name him. So if you have any suggestions for a name, just go ahead and put them below. The next booth I stopped at was Apple Yarns booth, and they are located in Billingham, Washington. I got four things. The first thing is the No Drama Llama socks. I also got two shawl cuffs and they are one in brown and one in black and those are recycled leather belts. And then I got a mug that says introverted but willing to discuss knitting. Four things that I can't wait to start using. It was getting close to the end of the show and we were trying to work our way back to the front door and I passed by Honey Girl Farms and I had passed by Honey Girl Farms a couple of times and I had eyed these pouches but it was when I realized that it was close to the end of the show I just couldn't resist. I had to look through her inventory and see if anything spoke to me. So what I ended up getting was two Notions pouches. So the first one I got was the Shadow Bicyclists in Lights. So you can see here that these are tones of blues with shadow bicyclists. The large is a five by eight and the light bulbs really add a pop of color. The other one I got was the Tickle Monster Notions bag. It's a smaller bag. They call it the medium bag and it's a four by seven and each side is a different uh, representation of the Tickle Monster. On our way out, I noticed the Kimonomono booth. They are located in Alameda, California, which is close to where I live, but I had never heard of them before. They appear to carry a lot of accessories with regards to quilting and sewing and things that I normally don't do. But they carried something that when I saw, I automatically thought this was for me. So I knit in the Portuguese style, and that means that I use my thumbs a lot, but when I am knitting a little bit tighter, I end up introducing the tips of the needle a lot on my tips of the finger. So I end up traumatizing this area right here on my finger quite a bit. So when I saw this, this is exactly what I needed. So you can see here, this is a leather thimble that goes on the tip of the finger. So this thimble will protect my finger from developing calluses, which I've been developing a lot of them recently since I've been knitting a little bit more. Not very fancy, but very, very functional for a Portuguese knitter. 
So we were still on the way out and one of my friends stopped at Greenwood Fiberworks because she saw a kit that she wanted. And of course, I got seduced by the faux pom-pom. I got three pom-poms. One is gray, one is black, and one is black with gray tips on them. So these are gonna look really good on my knitted hats. On my list of shops, I had one last stop to make, and luckily I remembered before we walked out the door. So we ended up backtracking and going to Pam Power Knits, located in Orange, California, and she had a beautiful booth with wonderful kits, but what really attracted me was her faux pom-poms. These faux pom-poms were just extraordinary. So I ended up getting four of them in some fashion colors. Colors. So if we look at the colorway from the left to the right, the left is honey and the honey is a yellow base with black tips. So very, very fluffy. Then we have Foxy. The Foxy is a beige base with red tips and black tips. Then there is the Himalayan. The Himalayan is a gray base with black tips. And then the Camel. So brown base with blondish brown tips. And that's it for what I purchased at Stitches West. My plan was to interview some of the vendors this year like I did the previous year, but I was feeling under the weather. So Saturday and Sunday, I basically spent the whole time in bed feeling miserable. So what I'm going to do is continue working on the interviews that I did from last year. So you're gonna see some of those coming up in the near future so that I introduce you to some of the vendors that you may not know know yet and I really want to be able to share them with you so watch for those videos to come out soon so that's it hopefully you enjoyed the things that I purchased um, I know I definitely did and now that I have shared it with you now I can finally open some of the skeins up and start to cast on